morning. I welcome to our share, Parshas Boy, Tavshin Pei Aleph, and uh, Baruch Hashem, the Yidin are now about to leave Mitzrayim. They're on the cusp of leaving, as we say, toward the end of the parsha. We'll take a look, Perik Yod Gimel, uh, Pasig Vav. Hayoyim atem yaitzim b'chaydesh oviv. You're now going to go out from Mitzrayim in the chaydesh oviv, and you know from, famously from Avigdor Miller, always talks about the why was b'chaydesh oviv. He says because when the Kodesh Baruch Hu does chesed for Klal Yisrael, he pours on extra chesed. So he has the chesed that you're going out from Mitzrayim, which is an amazing chesed. But could have gone out in a snowstorm. You could have gone well, maybe not there. You could have gone a sandstorm, more likely. But a Kodesh Baruch Hu does an extra chesed. And that's what we'll get to, Mitzvah, and we'll talk about that. But I'd like to talk about a medrash. There's a medrash that says, Kishiyatsu b'nei Yisrael mimitzrayim karsu bris lasos chesed zeimze. When the b'nei Yisrael left Mitzrayim, they made a bris to do chesed with each other. And I always read that medrash, and I had a kasha. Why did they wait till they left Mitzrayim to do chesed zeimze? Why didn't they do chesed when they were in Mitzrayim? It should say, Kishahayu b'nei Yisrael b'mitzrayim, karsu bris, lasu chesim zeh. And obviously there were karsu bris, they made a bris, that means it was a formal treaty. It was, uh, you know, uh, there was negotiations, and you make a treaty, it was something that they took very seriously. So how do we understand it? So I'd like to share with you a thought that I heard, and then I'd like to say my own, uh, a little bit of an insight. I heard from Reb Chaim Pincha Scheinberg, the famous Rosh Hashiv of Torah Or. It says in the Gemara in Sait, it tells that the, the, that the Torah is Tchilas Chesed, V'Saifei Chesed. It begins with Chesed, and it ends with Chesed. And what's the beginning of Chesed? As the Gemara says, when, the, when Adam and Chava were thrown out of Gnei so the Pasuk tells us that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made them a Kosnus Or. He made them garments of leather, or like Rameyer says, Kosnus Or with an Aleph. But he, but he took care of them. And Rav Chaim Pinchas Scheinberg asked, L'chaira, why is that the first chesed in the Torah? <laughs> he made the world. He took Adam and Rish, and he made Adam and Rish, and he gave him the Saif al Saif. He did such tremendous things. So why is this called chesed? Why is that the first chesed? And Bechlal says, Tyrus chesed al What's the difference between Tyrus chesed and chesed? There's regular chesed, Tyrus chesed. So he says that to do chesed, with the Vilna Gain. The Chesed with the Baal Shem Toiv. Das is Chesed. Avad is Chesed. Oh, but to do Chesed with somebody who got, was, did, had one mitzvah, a single mitzvah they were given, don't touch from Neitz Adas. Don't eat from Neitz Adas Toiv Ra. And the one mitzvah they didn't do it. And now because of that they were thrown out of Gan Eden, they should go up in the Zephos. Goodbye. Who needs you? So Kodesh Baruch told us what Tyrus Chesed is. Tyrus Chesed is to do Chesed with somebody when they're down and out, when things aren't going well for them, when they're not the room Hamayla. You know, there's a famous story about Rebelli Melch and Zisha, the two brothers, the two tzaddikim, they used to travel quietly in the, the, the Gullus and not telling anybody who they were, and they came to a certain place, a certain rich man. And the rich man, uh, you know, they didn't know, he didn't know who they were, and they threw him out. He says, I'm not giving you, you can't come stay by me. You're just a bunch of schnorrers. Go to the, uh, to the, to the Hachnosis Chesed over there. Go to the Hachnosis Archim. And then a few years later, they came back, and they were, you know, with uh, some white horses, white steeds, and a big carriage. And the Gvir sent a message. Now he didn't know that they were the same people. He said the famous Rebel Zisha. And he has a big, nice house. And he's the shiny Yid from the city. So he wanted to uh, invite them in. So he sends them and he tells them, oh, please come to my house and have chesed. And they said, Vada will come, no problem. And so what happens? The Gvir is waiting anxiously for them to show up. And all of a sudden he sees four white horses with a nice carriage pull up at his house. And no rebel Mel, no Rebzish, just a carriage. So he sends back to them a message, he says, where are you? So they said, you didn't want to invite us. You remember when we were the uh, Nebuch, the poor, poor people over there, you didn't want to do with us. You weren't Mechabit us, you're Mechabit the horses. So Zotra Scheinberg, that's, that's the Tyra's Mechabit the people, that were persons down and out, that's when they give a person covet. So I remember, I had my shvigar, Allah Shalom, lived on the Lower East Side. 
And she used to talk about the Lower East Side and reminisce about it. And she would say in glowing terms, and she was, it was she'd, she'd get like, you know, mushy and soft. And, the, and she thought it was so beautiful. We used to live together over there. And uh, and she would tell us that there were like ten apartments or whatever in, in, in the floor. F- whatever the number of apartments was, and there was one bathroom at the end of the hallway for all the people in the whole floor. She says, oh, look at that. And then she talked about the drunks in the, in the hallway that used to come in and they would come sleep there. And, 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 and she would tell us all about the Lower East Side, what it was like, the crowding, everything. And I thought, oh, it's awful. It's what, that's, wow, what's she getting? And I never understood, what was she getting so misty about? What was getting so, and then it hit me. And then it hit me. Because when people are poor and they don't have, they rely on each other. And they all do chesed with each other because they need it. And they get, this one sends over, I'm out of sugar, can you lend me some sugar? I'm out of eggs, can you lend me some eggs? You know, um, I'm making a, 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 a shavar box in my house, can I borrow chairs, right? Rachman uh, and somebody is, uh, is uh, sitting shiva and they, they need an aron. Everything was chesed because people didn't have so they did chesed with each other on a steady basis. And she remembered that achtus, that warmth, that feeling of chesed. It could be that the circumstances were, were not so great. But the chesed was awesome because they, they relied on each other and they cared for each other and they did for each other. You hear these stories of chesed that people did for each other in those days. They're amazing stories. The person who walks, you know, to get to the other person. The, the, when, a, when a woman gave birth, they, they would cook meals for her for three weeks and everything. It, that, that was chesed. And that's what she remembered fondly. And she remembered it because nowadays it's harder to do chesed. Because when we live so far apart from each other, in Baruch Hashem, everybody has eggs and everybody has sugar. How often do people run out? You go down to the store. And now you don't have to go to the store and you, you'll uh, have it Ubered over to your house. There's a whole different feeling. And there's a loss. At the one, at the one hand, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, the people live much better and the Shen and so on. But on the other hand, there's a loss of that ability to do chesed with each other. So the Klau Yisrael knew. Remember, when they came out of Mitzrayim, they're about to get very rich, right? Every year, they had 90 loads of donkeys filled with Mitzrayim's riches, the richest country in the world at that time. Mitzrayim was the most developed, the 13th dynasty, whichever one you hold, the, you know, according to the archaeologists, where, where B.C.'s Mitzrayim was. But they were rich. That everyone Kuliyam and Lopligi. And they're walking out with all this money. So the Klaus says, Oi, we have a problem. It's gewaltig to be rich. But remember when Mitzrayim, Remember how we cared for each other? Remember how when one yid ran out of bricks, the other yid made it for him? Remember how the, the, the people who were in charge used to take klep? They used to be beaten by Nisreen to protect another yid. Oh, look how we cared for each other. It was so beautiful. We're not going to lose it. We're all going to get rich. We're not going to need to borrow eggs anymore. We're going to have all the eggs we want. We're going to borrow sugar. We're not going to eat any of that. So therefore the Yidin Tzalk the Medrash Kishi Yatsu B'nei Yisro Mitzrayim Karsu Bris Lasus Chesedim Zayin Zayin When they left Mitzrayim Because in Mitzrayim they didn't need to make a bris In Mitzrayim they had everything They had all the Chesed and all the things they wanted Because that was, they had to There was no choice, you had to have Chesed But now that you're rich you may not need it So it's an awesome lesson for us today Because Baruch Hashem Baruch Hashem we live in, in a society Baruch Hashem which has is wealthy, I mean, relatively to the, what Klau Yusuf has gone through throughout the diaries, for sure. But even within our own Tekufas, people at Parnassa, but there's a lot of people that we have to look out for each other. That's why nowadays, for example, a person, a woman gives birth, the women still cook for her. Aye, they could easily buy it, order from the caterer. But there's, there's a difference. I remember once went to a, I was in Florida and I went to a pizza shop. And uh, I ordered pizza. So the man behind the counter says, we have a special ingredient in this pizza shop that's very special. I said, oh, that's it. What's the special ingredient? He says, Ava. We make every pizza with Ava. We put love into the pizza (laughs) because we care so much that you should have a good time. You should have a good experience. We have to put an Ava. We have to put an Ava into everything. We have to put Ches into everything. We have to go out of our way. We could get away with doing it, with ordering it or something, but a woman makes the cake herself. I'm not saying anything wrong with buying a cake. It's all good. But you make it, it has a special time. It's special to chesed time. 
So everything we do, we have to keep in mind that we should never shalom, lose the ability to chesed with each other. Because that's Tyrus chesed. Tyrus chesed is not just you do chesed and you forget about it. Tyrus chesed is for a person that doesn't even deserve chesed. You go out of your way to do a chesed. And the chesed binds Klau Yisrael together. Where it says, Oilam chesed yibana. Hashem made a world of chesed. What does it mean? He made a world of chesed. Because without chesed, there's no world. The chesed that we do for each other binds us to each other. The chesed that parents do for a child. The chesed a child does for parents. The chesed spouses do for each other. Rabbi Vigna Mill also, we quoted him before, say, he also said that the greatest chesed of any two people is a husband and a wife. Because every single minute, pass the potatoes, pass the peas, you know, everything you do is, is chesed. Your mom is doing chesed. Minute to minute to minute to minute, you're doing chesed with each other. That's the chesed that builds Kali Yisrael. It's the chesed that builds the world. Oilam chesed yibana. It's a world built on chesed. And without it, we don't have anything. And the Bnei Yisrael realize when they're leaving Mitzrayim, they need that chesed to do with each other. So the Pasuk tells us, and they left, Hayayim, Atem Yaitzim, you're going to leave B'chaydish Aviv. You're going to leave in the month of Aviv. You're going to leave in a month. It's going to be beautiful weather. It's going to be a shmak. Hashem says, I'm teaching you a lesson. I'm showing you how to do chesed. I do something for you. And I do you chesed upon chesed upon chesed. And at the beginning of Svira, if you can't remember, we're not by Svira Soimer, when you go back to Svira Soimer, and you look in the corner in the bottom over there, of every day, and there's a whole tefillah at the end, it says chesed, the first day is chesed, shibit chesed. Second day is chesed, shibit gvur shibit chesed. And so on, throughout the Zion spheres, throughout 49 days. What's chesed, shibit chesed? You do chesed, you do chesed. What's chesed, shibit chesed? That you have to do chesed upon chesed. Even when you're doing chesed, do it with chesed. You're giving somebody to eat, don't just say, here you go. Say, oh, how are you? Hope you'll enjoy it. Kishmak. That's chesed, shibit chesed. The average is a halfen. That we should all be zoicha to be mekayim, the pasuk oylem chesed yibana. We should fill our lives with chesed, and we should make a bris zeim zeh, lots of chesed zeim zeh. We should make a bris with each other to always do chesed, and with that chesed that we do, will have fulfilled the tachlis of the world. And Yitz Hashem will be zoicha. Hashem will look kindly upon us. He'll do chesed with us. Take us out of this tekufa that we've been in and doesn't seem to go away, doesn't, we don't seem to be able to shake it. And it's Hashem, you should continue to do chesed with us, with all of us, each and every one of us. Everybody who's sick, in Mitz Hashem, should have a refu shlema. Everybody who's not sick should not get sick. In Mitz Hashem, we should all be gesund and stark to serve the Rebbein Shalom and to be zaycha to his chesed, even as do chesed together with each other. A good Shabbos.